Paymon who? Mata Heyday. Paymon Mata Heyday. Who, who is he? Never paid taxes in 30 years. Bought the U.S. tax court and won. See, I believe our rights come from God, not from government. Hello, my truth and freedom-seeking friends. I am Paymon Motahede, the president and founder of Freedom Law School, which I created in 1996. And for over 30 years, I have not paid or filed any federal income or payroll taxes, and being teaching Americans like you to do the same thing legally and safely. In this presentation, I will cover a common question that comes up in people's minds when they entertain the possibility of not filing and paying federal income taxes. They say, well, if I stop paying income taxes, who will fund the government? You know, we need the government to, you know, take care of us, protect us, right? Well, I'll cover that in this presentation. But let's first, let me tell you, you want to go to Freedom lawschool.org for the empowering information you are looking for to live free now. That's right. Drain the swamp, regain your freedom, restore freedom. Go to freedomlawschool.org. So let's cover things like, for example, firefighters. You know, people say, what do we do without police, courts, firefighters, schools, roads, all these things? What are they paid for? Well, let's go over these things, okay? So here we are, firefighters, okay? Wikipedia is, it tells us a very common knowledge that city fire departments draw their funding directly from city taxes and share the same budget as other public works like the police department and tri services. That's right. Wow. Your police department your sheriffs, okay, the courts, you know, all these things you need, even the trash services are provided by your local taxes at the city and county level, not the federal government, okay? Let's go now to the other topic of schools specifically. Here's that, you know, edweek.org about school finance, okay? It tells us school budgets and the ways they are financed vary from state to state because America is 50 countries and every country has its own way of doing things state by state. And school district to school district. Generally though, states use a combination of income taxes, corporate taxes, sales taxes, and fees to provide about 48% of the budget of the elementary and secondary schools. So again, federal taxes are not a part of the game. It's the taxes you pay in your county, city, school district, or state that pays for the communist public fool system Okay, that many of us, unfortunately, has become dependent upon to educate our children. Let's move on now, talk a little bit more about the federal government plays a relatively small uh, role in, you know, first through 12th grade education. As of year 2022, look at this, 44% of state taxes, 43% of local taxes, 14% federal, which as it actually doesn't even belong. That's on, well, it's not, it's un, technically it's not unconstitutional, but it's not intended by the federal government to rob you. Here's what they do. The federal government robs the people of the state through deception. They have all this money. They turn around. They tell the school district, police, or city, say, you want some of that money? Mm. Do things the way we tell you to do it, and we'll give you the money. You don't want to do it our way? <laughs> you're not, not going to get any money from us. We'll give the money 
to those cities, you know, especially the big corrupt poor cities, okay, like Los Angeles and New York that are hungry for money, we're poor, because they will do it my way of the federal government. But guess what? I get to control them. <laughs> That's how the corrupt the system has become. If you don't fund the federal government, they won't be able to control your local cities and counties in any way. And because you have more money to spend in your county and your city, guess what? There's more sales taxes. There's more money to buy houses. Price of housing goes up, which means higher-valued houses pay more property taxes. So guess what? There'll be no need whatsoever for the counties and cities and school districts and police to go to the federal government and beg to get that 14%. Okay? Now let's move on to the highways. Again, common knowledge on Wikipedia even, right? What do they tell us about the highways? Well, they're called the federal highways. But the roadways were built, were built, and have always been maintained by state or local governments since their initial designation in 1926. That's right. Oh, even the federal highways, not just local roads, but even federal highways are paid by, you know, the states. It's just a federal numbering system that they use so that you can easily go from state to state and don't get lost. Don't, the name of the highways don't change. That's all the federal part is, just to keep a consistent numbering system of the highways. Okay, let's now look at this again. PG, uh, Peter uh, G. Peterson Foundation give us again more information that shows that the federal government only funds only 22% of the highways and 70% is by state and local governments. But even there, guess what these are? This is not your income tax. This is your gas tax at the pump. That's how many pay gas. You see how much state and federal taxes added to your gasoline? That's what pays for the federal highways, not your income or payroll taxes. Nothing will change. Highways will be built just fine in America. Let's move on now without, without the federal income taxes. Again, how much of road spending is funded by user taxes in your state? Look at this chart. In California, 99.7% is paid by what? By local taxes. You know, Wyoming, you know, 58%. Utah, about 44%. Florida, 79%. Texas, 74%. Again, you know, and then these are paid by local money. Okay? Local taxes not the federal taxes, that we are led to believe that we need to have a safe and sound America. So I just showed you basically that America will do just fine. Police, the courts, sheriffs that will keep you secure and safe, paid by local property tax, sales tax, and other local taxes, okay, DME taxes and, and so forth. Okay? Schools, firemen, roads, the same way. So what do we need the federal government for? And federal taxes anyways. Well, look, back in 1700, 76, there was 13 countries or states, right, that became independent of England. The colonies of England became independent countries. Here, you see them in 1775, before they became countries, okay? Over time, that changed. Over time, they changed that they uh, here's the, here's the Declaration of Independence, right, of 1776, okay? And they talk about the laws of nature and nature's God, okay? Because they recognize that your rights are not from government. Your rights come from your creator above, okay? You were born with them. And that was a revolutionary statement to say, 
to the whole people of the earth that some king or dictator is not your owner. No, 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 no. You own your life. That's what God gave you to live your life as you choose, as long as you do not violate other people's rights, as long as you keep your agreements with others. That's the basics of natural law. And here the founding fathers talk about that. They talk about your unalienable rights. Rights that cannot be taken away from you, made alien to you. It's unalienable rights. That among them are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Okay, among them is a lot more they did not specifically mention. Okay, and that to secure these rights you were born with, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers to keep you safe and secure and free from the consent of the government. And that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends of securing your rights and freedom, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish that government and to institute new governments that would lay its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem more likely to you, uh, uh, here we go, established to secure their safety and happiness the way you want to. So <clears throat> here we go, to affect their safety and happiness. So that is the purpose of the, the, the government period. And the states were completely independent countries for over a decade. In 1789, they proposed a constitution for a new government, an agent of the states. This agent of the states was to handle 18 common needs of all the countries or states that became part of a union. Common defense, common foreign relations, common money, and 15 other common needs of these states. And they kept all the rights and powers to themselves, okay? Actually, states have powers. People have rights to be more accurate, okay? So, <clears throat> so the U.S. Constitution, it was a revolutionary thing at the time also because nobody ever created that kind of a system in America before, okay? And the Constitution... All it was is a creation of a new government. It was a framework of a new government they organized. And the states now delegated certain powers to the states, I mean, say to the federal government, and retained all the powers, everything else to themselves, as I said, right? So the federal government is a government of limited, specific powers that have been delegated. Everything else is kept by the states. That's why the corona hoax lockdowns were done by each country in the union, state by state. South Dakota had none ever. California, New York, Hawaii, these communist states had draconian, harsh lockdowns. Florida had a little bit of it, and then they let it go. There is no such thing as a federal corona lockdowns. All the federal government could do is to do propaganda and induce the states begging with the help of the corrupt major media as well as the, uh, the high tech that's controlled, uh, control high tech. Then they got a lot of people to take the shots and jab anyways. So I'm going to show you right now. We're going to go to 10th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. See, again, they recognize we the people have all the power in the system. It's us. They deliberately put we the people in the U.S. Constitution big to remind everybody that we the people have the power, not the government, okay? In order to form a more perfect union among the countries. It's a union of countries to establish justice ensure domestic tranquility, provide for common defense, 
and promote general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. All right? So let's now go to the Bill of Rights, which is our first 10 amendments of the U.S. Constitution, which is really not a bill or list of your rights at all. It's just they call it that, you know. It's just further restrictions on the federal government's powers. And here in these 10 amendments, they reminded everybody of some of the limitations of this new agent, the U.S. government's powers, which was delegated by the states, okay? So here we go. The 10th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, it says that the powers not delegated to the United States federal government by the Constitution for the United States, nor prohibited by to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. That's right. All the power eventually goes back and belongs to we the people. Okay? So, now, people say, well, pay bond. Okay. I see we don't, we don't need the federal government for roads and schools, police, sheriffs, courts to be safe in our communities. Okay. But how about the military? What are you going to do about that? That's part of the federal government's responsibilities, right? Yes, it is. But look at this. Again, if this is well-known stuff that even Wikipedia tells you, okay, about the United States Department of War. Never heard of it? I know why you haven't heard of it, because of deception. You see, you did not know there was no such thing as the United States Department of Defense until 1949. See, the War Department existed from 1789 until September 1947. After a couple of years of transition, it finally became a, the United States Department of Defense. See, that's war. That's right. <laughs> you want, we don't have a Department of Defense. No. We don't use the military to defend us from anybody. Are you kidding me? It's all to make war on other people and offend them, aggressively destroy other countries. Okay? Now, all this propaganda you see on television about Iran, Russia, China, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, X, Y, Z. Are you kidding me? No, these countries hold a candle to the American empire's military. How are they going to come mess with us? Okay? America is separated from the world by the Atlantic Ocean on the east and then Europe, which is friendly to us. There are West Europe is our slave. And on the east, by the greatest part of the earth, the Pacific Ocean is huge between us and China and Eastern Russia and Japan. So it's absolutely ridiculous to anybody to say, oh, Russia's going to annihilate uh, Western Europe, go over Atlantic Ocean, and then come and take over the America 50 states. Russia's economy is the size of Mexico. It's just ridiculous to, to say that. But they do. Russia... Russia, Russia, because what their goal is to distract you from the enemies within our gates. The big banks, corporation, big media, military, industrial complex, those crooks or criminals do not want you to realize they made you their slave, deceiving you to pay income and payroll and other federal taxes to spend, you know, on on them to give the money. They don't want you to know that's what's going on, so they make all this boogeyman foreigners, you know, come get you. Iran, come on, are you kidding me? It's smaller than even Mexico. Okay, there's no way you can attack America. All right? So that, but, so this is about aggression. It's not about defense. It's about time we American people realize that they deceived us in that, in that area. And look, look at the right. This is again from a, 
Peter J. Peterson Foundation, United States spends more on military, not defense, military aggression than the next 10 countries combined. More than China, Russia, India, Saudi Arabia. By the way, they're our friends because they give a lot of their oil money to us to give them military. England, Germany, France, South Korea, Japan, and Ukraine. Again, Ukraine, <clears throat> the whatever they got, they get, they they buy our military. So that's why you know we like them, right? They fund our military, uh, or you know, companies. We don't need to spend all this money. This is almost nine hundred billion dollars of known budget. We could spend ten percent of that, only ninety billion, and we will be completely safe. That's right. And you know what? There's so much waste and corruption. Even that 10% of the current, the official budget, is too much that we don't have to spend. Okay, I'll come to that in just a second. Here's another chart that shows the share of the world military expenditures of the 15 countries with the highest spending listed specifically. On the right, over a third, 39%. Of the world's military spending is by the United States of America. Next to Japan, I mean China at the bottom, 13%, and left to that Russia, India, and so forth. Why do we need to spend all this money on, uh, on military? We don't. Okay, they're just fooling us, folks. Okay, these companies that make these military machines and tanks and airplanes and rockets, they're making billions and trillions. Billions and trillions with the money that you are deceived to pay to Washington, D.C. government to pay these military contractors to get richer and richer and richer at your expense. Okay? So <clears throat> let's play this video now. Okay? This was on CBS News. Okay? And this was the art of the, of the uh, Pentagon, okay, way back then in the late 90s. September 10th, 2001, a day before 9-11, hmm, he's had an accident, that they released the result that shows that the Pentagon could not account for or locate $2.3 trillion of the late 1990s money. Over 25 years ago, they could account for 2.3 trillion, which is today's money would be over 10 trillion dollars with a T. It's not that it was mismanaged, they paid too much for things. No. They don't even know where the money went. It's like disappeared down someplace. We can't find it because they got you deceived that we gotta protect ourselves from the Chinese, Russians. Iranians and all North Korea, all these enemies boogeymen out there. So let's watch this. 2.3 trillion with a T. That's eight thousand dollars for every man, woman, and child in America. To understand how the Pentagon can lose track of trillions, consider the case of one military accountant who tried to find out what happened to a mere three hundred million. We know it's gone. But we don't know what they spent it on. Jim Minnery, a former Marine turned whistleblower, is risking his job by speaking out for the first time about the millions he noticed were missing from one defense agency's balance sheets. Minnery tried to follow the money trail, even crisscrossing the country looking for records. The director looked at me and he says, why do you care about this stuff? <laughs> it took me aback, you know. My supervisor asked me why I care about doing a good job. So. He was reassigned and says officials then covered up the problem by just writing it off. They gotta cover it up. That's where the corruption comes in. They've gotta cover up the fact that they can't do the job. The Pentagon's inspector general partially substantiated several of Minnery's allegations, but could not prove officials tried to manipulate the financial statements. 
20 years ago, Pentagon employee Franklin C. Spinney made headlines exposing what he calls the accounting games. He's still there, and although he does not speak for the Pentagon, he believes the problem has gotten worse. Those numbers are pie in the sky. The books are cooked routinely year after year after year. Retired Vice Admiral Jack Shanahan commanded the Navy's second fleet the first time Donald Rumsfeld served as defense secretary. With good o financial oversight, we could find $48 billion in loose change in that building without having to hit the taxpayers. In the two and a half minutes since this report began, the Pentagon has spent nearly $2 million, and it may never know where 25% of those tax dollars went. Yeah. <laughs> Corruption. And they were covering it up even back then. One out of four dollars they spent in the military, they can't even know where it went to. They pocket to their friends, the crooks and cronies. So we're going to be completely safe from any potential foreign attack, okay? Why would Russia try to mess with us? They don't. We're messing with them, okay? China, we are their biggest customers, okay? Why would you shoot your customer that buys your product and makes you rich? Would it make any sense, right? Chinese would not have no interest to try take over America, not to mention America is one of the very few countries in the world and the biggest on earth that people have a right to have guns. There's no way they could take over America, folks. It's absolutely ridiculous. So you're going to be completely safe. So know this. You have no legal, moral, ethical, or constitutional duty to pay for any of these crooked actions of the federal government. We're going to be completely safe without them. And the other two videos in this series I'll cover, the other two topics are important. One is how <clears throat> your money is being wasted. You just got a glimpse of the waste of the government and the military. Well, they're wasted everywhere. We'll cover that in another video you should check out. And we'll cover even worse. They actually use your money against you to enslave you, to hurt you, and even murder you and your fellow American citizens. Why would anybody pay for their own self-destruction? It's just crazy. I wouldn't do that. In fact, for over 30 years, I have not filed and paid any federal income taxes, taught others to do the same. Not your turn, my friends, to do the same. Go to our website, freedomlawschool.org, and continue to educate and empower yourselves to be free and not fund your enemies. Follow the law, number one. Number two, you have to stop filing the tax forms. Stop following those 10 for income tax confession forms. Number three, realize that the IRS is over 99% bluff. Number four, you can take courage from our victories. We've beaten the IRS many, many times, my students and myself, all safely. None of me and my students have paid a dollar. One dollar to the IRS have gone to prison for federal taxes ever since I started this program 22 years ago in 2001. Five, question authority. Write your lawmakers. If there's a law requiring you to file and pick up tax, write them, ask them, show me. To refute our petition, which they can't do, if they show you the law, pay it. But if they can't, which they've never done, don't pay your enemies in Washington, D.C., any more money again. Now, all that is for free, and you should do it. By the way, you could all stop uh, uh, withholding or stealing from your paycheck by your employer for free at freedomlawschool.org. Yes, I want you. If you work for Walmart, McDonald's, your low-wage job, anywhere, do it for free, folks. Okay? Keep 100% of the money you give to the IRS. Keep it for yourself and your family. You need it. I know inflation is hurting you and your family. You deserve to keep that money that your employer is stealing and give it to the IRS. So keep that money, okay? And now, some of you <clears throat> who make more money or want to take part in restoring freedom in America, 
taking us back to the roots of our freedom, you may be interested in going to step six. And that is join the Restore Freedom Plan and will 100% protect you from any and all kinds of attacks by the IRS and put your money to use to restore freedom for America for you, your children, and your grandchildren. And then last but not least, folks, just going to love everybody, folks. Love and spread the truth. Spread the word. Tell everybody about Freedom Law School, our plan to restore freedom, so they have an opportunity to be free, to be more prosperous, to get our country back. If you don't tell people, if you don't tell your family members, friends about us, they have no choice. If you don't tell your co-workers about our Freedom Law School, they have no choice. Because they don't even know we exist. You tell them about Freedom Law School, now you give them a choice. They can listen to you or ignore you. They can be closed-minded, saying, no, I'm not interested. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, it doesn't make sense. Wah, 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 wah. You're, you're a conspiracy theorist. Or they might say, hey, I'm interested. Educate me. I want to learn more. I want to know about how to restore freedom. Gee, people are not supposed to pay income tax in America. 99%? Okay. Let me check it out for myself. I'll go read this and go to your website and educate myself. Call us. We'll mail you these brochures for free, okay? Restore freedom brochures, okay? So you can pass that out to your friends, family members, and coworkers, okay? The updated version of these, we'll get it to you. And put any of our videos or material on your social media, you know, on your uh, video platforms. You have given permission to put it out there. Put your name out there, no problem. We're happy to reward you and pay you when you become a modern-day Paul Revere and tell other people about Freedom Law School and Restore Freedom in America. So with that, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this. I love every one of you. I really do. I do this because I want to live free and I just want, as a young man, have fun in life, enjoy life, and have a family, okay? It is beautiful earth that God gave us. Now that I'm older, and I got what I want for me, I still want to be free because I want you to be free. I want the world to be free. Why should we be slaves? Why should we pay for wars and murdering innocent people out there, right? And guess what? Now you have a say. Now you can take real action by not supporting these criminals in DC for the wars and corruption. Okay? Fund yourself and your family okay? by telling others about it. So do your part. Love yourself first. Continue your education at freedomlawschool.org. At the same time, tell others about us and give those you love the opportunity to be free and take part if they choose and restoring America and our children and our grandchildren's future to freedom once again.